goes on the quantum of QE tapering, and do you see further incremental pressure on emerging markets and Asian currencies? I think that's a good question. Uh, essentially, I think what the market would be most happy with would be a non-farm payrolls number of around 100 to 100, sorry, 180,000. I think that would show uh, that the jobs market is sufficiently robust to continue growing, so no fears there, but not so aggressive such that we would see um, aggressive action by the Fed. Uh, I think there's a growing sense that uh, the quantum of tapering may not be as much as originally anticipated. I think if they came in around the, the 5 billion area, we would see a positive uh, reaction in emerging markets. Uh, but I think the underlying withdrawal of liquidity cannot be escaped. Uh, and to that extent, I think pressure on EM remains. What are your views on emerging markets versus developed markets? Well, actually, um, EM started to underperform DM, uh, particularly in Asia, as far back as mid-2011. So the, the, the gradual rotation from uh, uh, emerging markets to particularly the United States has been going for quite a while. Uh, and I can see why, you know, the earnings profile uh, and earnings revision uh, profile of, for example, the States is, is much superior uh, to what we're seeing in Asia. And I suspect that will continue. So I don't think it's a, a fun of um, sell on the rumor and buy on the fact. I think the underlying tone of earnings, of fundamentals, uh, and frankly of technicals also is, uh, remain supportive of DM for the time being. Differential between US and Indian real interest rates contracted recently. When do we see further debt inflows to India? Look, I don't think it's a function of um, a absolute differentials. I think it's really more a function of the underlying health of the economy. Uh, there has not seemed to be, um, I think in investors' eyes, a credible uh, policy initiative um, implemented as yet to address some of these problems. Uh, you know, uh, previously or pre prior to the uh, Lehman crisis, for example, uh, India's uh, external, fin uh, external financing was essentially uh, FDI and uh, reasonably stable uh, commercial uh, loans. It's subsequently been replaced by bond inflows and, and particularly equity inflows. And, and of course, that's hot money. Uh, and until uh, investors see some sort of credible uh, policy initiative with a political uh, support to back it, um, I suspect pressure will remain on, um, on outflows and, and, frankly, the external account position. Inflationary expectations in the Indian economy still remain high. However, do you think that the RBI should still take a stance and reverse the recent liquidity tightening steps? Look, I think that uh, what they're doing at the moment is um, reasonably, um, I think, positive macroprudential policy, uh, but it lacks, I think, the political underpinnings to reasonably uh, prosecute and implement. For example, with elections due in May, uh, it's unlikely that we see some credible austerity measures necessary to rein in the fiscal deficit, uh, or at least until afterwards. And certainly that's a view the rating agencies are taking. The rating agencies want really to remain on hold until the elections uh, and see what new policies um, are implemented before they make a decision. My view is that whoever gets into power is still going to uh, face these very intractable problems uh, and some very difficult uh, and, and uh, decisions to be made with a lot of political will. Do you think the RBI should cut interest rates and focus on growth rather than on the rupee? I think they're going to remain on hold for a time being, actually. I don't think they want to loosen materially uh, and unleash inflation. Uh, at the same time, I think they're going to have to uh, remain uh, cautious about, uh, about growth and, and uh, be support uh, as supportive as they can.